go. Let's see what we can find today. Jesus Christ, it's all about who? Come on now, I gotta do better than that. Jesus Christ, it's all about him. It's all about him. Let's talk about it this morning. We're gonna roll, buddy. We'll just roll through a lot of this. Here we go. His impact. Jesus Christ impact on the world. 39 years ago on my life. Amen? Incredible. True story. Amen. I've lived it. I've seen his impact. Amen? Come on. He's still making an impact like Mitch. Mitch told me this week. He said, I wrote a song. He said, Dad, it just flowed like this. Nothing to it. Boom, 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 boom. I like it when my son is hearing and doing that fast. Amen? Say, come on. And it to flow like that. That tells me good things are happening. Amen? Come on. Praise God. Amen. Chuck, Chuck Peace, are you here today? Maybe second service. He's my prayer partner. Okay. I need to see him also if I can later. Here we go. Here we go. His impact. Let's get back to where we're at. Recently, a poll was done on who has had the greatest impact on the world. Sadly, Jesus Christ came in seventh place. Hey, I'm talking about the poll. That was the poll. All right. They are wrong. But the point is, it's a good barometer of our world. Yes or no? Amen. Come on. Keep looking. Cities across America like Mobile, Alabama. I think it was interesting because President-elect Trump last night had a rally in Mobile, Alabama. And right on the front of the uh, podium was Merry Christmas. Right on the front of the thing, Merry Christmas. Well, it's interesting because in Mobile, Alabama, a great southern city, they decided to change its annual Christmas parade to the Holly Jolly Parade for PC reasons. They don't, and that's in Mobile, Alabama. Are you kidding me? Now, I think that may be somewhere else, but Mobile? Who's running the place? Excuse me. Come on. Schools across America have replaced the word Christmas. It's almost across the board now. They've replaced the word Christmas for winter holidays. And you know what that does to our kids? Pop it up. Here's what it does to our children. Children are wondering what's so wrong and bad about Christmas. If you can't say it. Are y'all listening to me or not? There's a message that's being sent. Oh no, we're just trying to get along with it. I understand. I like getting along with folk. But you're doing something else. Why can't we say Christmas, Dad? What's so wrong with it? There's nothing wrong with it. Come on, his impact, his in No wonder he's coming in seven. It's all part of Satan's plan, excuse me, to dumb down people about Jesus. His impact was people like me and you that's gonna open our mouth, amen, say. And not be ugly, no, but God's gifted me with a loud mouth, amen. You can hear me across the room. Amen. Now, some aren't loud. That's good. You be your real quiet self and you just say Merry Christmas. That's okay. You like the corner where you are. Many cities around the country have instructed their city and state employees to avoid saying Merry Christmas, but rather ha Happy Holidays, Seasons Greetings, or whatever, guys. Now, here's the city and state talking. Whatever you say, you say whatever, but don't say Merry Christmas. Don't say Merry Christmas. Guys, I'm not making this stuff up. You know I'm telling you the truth of here. Come on. Any reference to Jesus Christ, especially concerning his birth, is deemed, say it with me, harmful, offensive, or it's... You're just being a little too much there. Uh, you need to calm it down. You know, you walk by me and said Merry Christmas. I mean, really. You're a radical. No, I'm not a radical. I just like Christmas, okay? Crazy. Keep looking. State and city employees we're talking about, and, and federal. It's funny, it's funny though. I don't hear these employees and these folks, folks squawking about the extra days off with pay or their Christmas bonuses. 
Amen, yes or no? Oh, we like Christmas now. We can't call it Christmas. I like it though. I don't hear the department stores wishing to do away with all the Christmas shoppers. Do you say? Now, you can't say Merry Christmas at the checkout line. Don't do that now. But yeah, get there early and ring your bells and welcome everybody. We're schizophrenic. Y'all hear me, yes or no? Crazy. But without Jesus Christ, listen guys, the impact of Christ, we're talking about the impact. And we ain't there to the message, we're just having this little intro right now. Without Jesus Christ, there would be no Christmas. You'd think the department stores could come up with this on their own. Here, we all gonna get together. And we all gonna say Christmas is, you know, it ain't Christmas, it's just, it's a holiday. It's a holiday. So we're gonna call it holiday. And we'll get people to buy gifts and come to our store and buy lots of extra stuff. Or do you think Jesus impacted this time? And that Christmas exists because of Jesus Christ. Amen. Did y'all that lose you on that thought? Listen, there'd be no Christmas, no happy holidays. You think happy Kwanzaa could pull this off? Say, yes or no? Yes or no? Happy Kwanzaa. Oh yeah, I gotta run out the store and buy me some gifts. I don't think it'll fly. Excuse me. As I, as I was having a meeting, we're trying to organize a big thing, we're gonna change the world. I don't believe that'd do it. Y'all listening or not? Oh. If you're listening on radio, don't worry about writing me while I just said, okay? It's all right. Listen, I'm telling you, we are so big for our own riches. We're so smart. We think we're so smart. Here's what the Bible says, how smart people are. But that when they knew God, they know what Christmas is about. They know what it's about. Come on, get a book. You're educated. Read one. They glorified him not as God. Neither were they what? Thankful. But became vain in their imagination. Their imagination said, you know what? It's offensive if we say Christmas. We can't be doing that. It's because you became vain in your imaginations and became stupid. Y'all hear me, yes or no? Now, guys, I'm sorry I'm telling you this because if you watch the media, it's like, you probably think I'm wrong. I'm not, okay? Say, this is the truth right here. You need to turn that other crap off. Excuse me. All right, sometimes. Y'all listening to me? I know that was ugly. I know that was ugly. That was ugly. But they became vain in their imagination. Their foolish heart was darkened. They come up with this great idea. This great idea. No more Christmas. Say this. Say that. Professing themselves to be what? They became what? Are you hearing me? Yes or no? Is that what the Bible just said? Sure it is. Keep looking. Jesus Christ has impacted our world. Our calendar. Do you know it's B.C. and A.D.? Do y'all know that? Yes or no? Yeah. He's a, he's a pact at this time of year especially. You go anywhere. People that don't know the Lord at all. At all. In this country. They'll have Merry Christmas out front of their house. Is that true? Yes or no? You'll pass people who don't go to church ever. They'll go, Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Don't believe the lie. He's impacted the world. Amen? Come on. Whether people want to acknowledge it or not, he has impacted our world. Now, we're going to switch gears and move to the Bible. Y'all all right? That's actually my little fun part in the message. I get to do that part. That's where I get in trouble right there, by the way. You'd be pretty good, Clark, if it weren't for them intros. Amen. That's when people leave. I, boom. Not really. Here we go. Jesus Christ's impact is immeasurable. The family. The impact on family. Living proof right in front of you, the Clark family. Hellraiser's lost drunk mama. We started going to church right at the end of November, early December, 77. Look at the impact that Jesus Christ made on the Clark, just the Clark family. That's huge. Not saying your family, your family's got it too. It's just the truth. Look at it. Benevolence. How many would say, Pastor Gary, I used to be stingy as a day as long, and it's just a miracle. I find myself giving now. Can I see your hand? That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> Behavior. He takes hell raisers and turns them into praisers. Amen? Come on. Missions. Giving to people we've never seen. Look at our government. We are so smart. We did it all. You didn't do it all. He did it. People came to this country because they wanted religious freedom. Come on, but now we get it where it's going good, we think, and we just want to back off and say, well, he didn't do any of it. We're crazy people. 
That's why the poll says what it says. People are getting dumbed down. Come on. Laws. You think we have the laws? Where do you think thou shalt not steal came from? Where do you think the idea that a husband and a wife are supposed to stay together and not cheat on each other? Where do you think that came from? Take a wild guess. The what? Bible. You hear me? Music. Greatest music, some of the greatest music ever written. Literature. Education. So much of education. Yale. Harvard. Harvard started out as a Christian missionary school to win people to Christ and to train preachers. You're kidding me. They sort of miss the mark these days, don't they? Now they're training people to run our government into a ditch. Excuse me. That's just me talking today. I need to hush. <laughs> Education, relationships, compassion, respect for who? Women. Okay. Children. We need to get back to the Bible. Amen. Come on. We need to pray for people. They'll start to see the Bible and understand. This is beautiful. The list is endless. I could go on and on. His impact is immeasurable. Now let's take a look at those impacted by Jesus Christ at his birth. And I'll try to cover as many as I can for our time. And if we don't get them all, that's okay. Because we're going to get a bunch of them. Here we go. The impact to those who are closest to the story. Not people who have rewritten it. Not people who are telling us, hush. Let's go back to the Bible and see those that were literally there. And let's see what they did. And see how they were impacted. Here we go. Let's start out right here. Say it with me. His earthly mother, Mary. Don't you think Mary might could help us a little bit today? Let's see what Mary says. Here's what she said about the Lord. And Mary said, my soul doth magnify the Lord. And my spirit has rejoiced in God, my who? Savior. For he has regarded, say that with me, the low estate of his handmaiden. For behold, from henceforth, all generations are going to call me what? Blessed. For he that is mighty has done to me great things and holy is his name. Pretty big impact. That's right out the gate with Mary. It's just little baby Jesus. Amen? Come on. So what was his impact on, on, on Mary? My soul doth magnify the Lord, she said. My spirit rejoices in God, my Savior. Big impact. He's regarded my low estate. Okay? I am blessed. He's done great things in my life. Holy is his name. Big impact on Mary when Jesus came. So, what was the biggest impact that the Savior made on Mary? Say it with me. One, two, three. Mary. That should be the impact of Jesus on you. I don't know about going to church and stuff or, you know, worshiping the Lord. Well, you need to know about it. Amen. Say, <laughs> need to worship. And yeah, you can worship other places than here for sure. Good. Do it there too. We can turn McDonald's into a place where we can give praise to the Lord for a little old man that's sat in the corner. Why can't we? Amen. And the managers and everybody loved it. It's just a lie that you can't take Jesus everywhere you go. Amen? Come on. Worship. She was impacted by Jesus Christ to worship the Lord. That's how she was impacted. Keep looking. Push me, buddy. Now listen. When you really meet Jesus, his impact on you, say it with me, is to hit the what? And to lift up his what? That is the impact that Jesus Christ should make on your life. Y'all hear me? Well, I'm a Christian, but you don't worship. I'm a Christian, but you live your life your own way. I'm a Christian. I don't need all that organized religion stuff. I, I believe a lot of it's, you know, crazy too. I'm with you. But listen, do you worship it? That should be the impact. And by the way, I'm going to say this for you. There was absolutely no, hey, look and pray to me whatsoever in Mary. Did y'all hear me? Yes or no? No. She would have never said, hey, look at me and pray to me. Do you find that in the Bible? No, he, she says, he has regarded my low estate. I'm a teenage girl. And she was a teenage girl like any other teenage girl. She was born by 
parents, just like any other teenage girl was born. And we're all born into what? Sin. You don't believe Mary's sin, do you? I don't believe my Bible if I don't. Does the Bible say all have come short of, of, of the glory of God? Does the Bible say there's none righteous, no, not one? Yeah, but Mary. The Bible doesn't say that. Man says that. That's where professing themselves to be wise, they become what? We don't want to change the Bible, guys. Amen? Come on, that's where you start going down a bad path. Listen, do we honor Mary? Absolutely, because she even said it herself. People are going to call me blessed. Amen? And we do. We do. That's Mary, you are blessed. You are blessed. Because of him. Amen. Y'all get that one? That's his impact. His stepfather. Let's look at him. Let's see what, how he was impacted. Now the birth of Jesus, Christ was on this wise. When as his mother, Mary, was a spouse to Joseph, before they came together, before they had sexual relations, she was found with what? Wow, this don't happen. Found with child of the Holy Ghost. Then Joseph, her husband, being a what kind of man? Just man, not willing to make her a public example because he loved her, cared about her, could have had her stoned. He didn't. He was minded to just put her away privately just to sort of make this thing go away. You know what I'm saying? We're not going, you know. But I'm not going to have her stoned to death. That's what could have happened. So while he's thinking on these things, all screwed up in his head, who wouldn't be? Behold, the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream, saying, Joseph, thou son of David, say it with me, fear not to take unto you who? Mary, your wife. Keep reading with me. For that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Ghost. Wow. Man, it probably just got crazier for Joseph. Thought I was already crazy. And she shall bring forth a son. Now say this part with me. And thou shalt call his name. And he shall save his people from their sins. Amen. Keep looking. Other scripture. Then Joseph being raised from sleep did as the angel of the Lord had bidden him. And he took unto him Mary to be his wife. Just like the angel said. He didn't have sexual relations with her until she had brought forth her firstborn son. And called his name Jesus. Mary later on had other children. There's a lot of people that teach you and make you believe that Mary and Joseph were, were married, never had sexual relations at all. Well, was, she got them babies from somewhere. <laughs> Amen, say. Read the Bible. Keep looking. And when they were departed, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream, saying, Arise, take the young child and his mother, and flee to where? Egypt, because Herod's killing all the little ones under the age of two. Yes or no? Absolutely. So he arose, he took the young child and his mother by night, and they departed into Egypt. This is Joseph. Is he being impacted by this child? Don't you feel his life changing? But when Herod was dead, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream, saying, Arise, take the young child and his mother, and now go back to the land of Israel, for they're dead now. They're dead that sought to kill you, kill this little child rather. They're dead. You can go back home now to Nazareth. And he arose and he took the young child and his mother and they came back to the land of Israel. Amen. What's the impact? Let's look at the impact right quick. Look at it. Joseph did not fear what man would say. You think he heard a lot of mess? Yes or no? A lot of trash talking? He took Mary to be his wife. He called him who? Jesus, just like they said. He took him down there to Egypt. This is a lot of work. He took Jesus to Nazareth, to his hometown. Right back there where everybody and their brother knew him. It had been probably easier to go somewhere else and hide with her. Instead of bringing her back and say, you know, this a little boy right here. No, he ain't mine. I mean, he's the Holy Ghost child. How'd that play out, you think? Do you see what I'm saying? But he obeyed the Lord. How did he, how was his life impacted? You know what, we you know what I came up with here? Joseph really found a reason to live. He found a reason to live. His whole life was changed. He was moving here and going here. And 
marrying somebody that people said he shouldn't. But he did it. Didn't he? His whole life was changed. He found a reason to live, to be the husband of this family, to be this father, to be this protector. Amen. Say, Jesus Christ gave him real meaning and purpose in his life. What well, looked like a sad situation for Joseph turned out to be the what? The greatest thing in his life. Hallelujah. When you really meet Jesus, guys, his impact on you will be something that will give your life real meaning and purpose. I watched it in my mama's life. That Saturday night after watching Billy Graham on the TV, drunk as a skunk, she got up and went to church. I went with her. Three weeks later, we put our faith in Christ. My mother never drank another drop. She became just, you know, it took her a while, man, but she, it didn't take her too long. <laughs> she became on fire for the Lord. Amen. Serving where she could. She never read the Bible. She didn't know nothing about the Bible, but Jesus Christ gave mama a reason to live. It gave me a reason to live too, even though I fought it. I don't know if y'all know this or not, but my mama took me to Bible college. My mama never left North Carolina much. Country people are like that, especially where I'm from. Mama took me to Chattanooga, Tennessee to go to Tennessee Temple University. That's a good mama that'll do that right there. Put me on that path. Amen? And now my life has been impacted by Jesus Christ big time. He's given me meaning and purpose. I know who I am. I know what I do. I don't sometimes think I do a good job at it. But that's the devil. Okay? I know I matter and I know I have value. God's good to me. But I'm, I'm proud, not in a negative or arrogant way, but I'm proud to be pastor of Fellowship Church in Inglewood, Florida. I know what I'm going to do on Sunday morning. Amen? I know where I'm going to be. I don't think my young ones have to wonder, where is daddy going? Amen? Or Kim says, are you getting up today? Now, I watch her later when I leave. <laughs> but I kissed her a bunch this morning before I left. Amen? I did. I love her. She's so good to me. The shepherds. You might say, well, Mary and Joseph, I know, but you know, they were sort of big shots. No, they weren't. They were poor people. But okay, you can think that way. Let's go to the shepherds. Stinky shepherds. You got a better house than they got, and you got better transportation than they got, okay? And you got better clothes than they got. Let's see if they were impacted. They were in the same country, shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And lo, the angel of the Lord came to the shepherds. The glory of the Lord shone round about them, and they were what? Sore afraid. That's some serious afraid right there. If you put sore in front of it, that's some serious afraid right there. Amen. And the angel said unto them, Fear not. For I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. Say this part with me. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign unto you. You shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a what? Do you think these shepherds were familiar with mangers? Yes or no? Sure they were. Feeding troughs. Boy, he's speaking language they understand. If he had told them to go to the big city and find them on the fifth floor, probably been a problem. But you go and you'll find that little baby in wrapped in old blankets and mess, laying in a manger. Maybe they could do this. Talking their language, amen? And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest uh, earth on earth, peace, goodwill toward men. And it came to pass that the angels were gone away from them to heaven. The shepherds said one to another, say it with me. Let us now go even unto what? Bethlehem, which was just a little spot in the road. Not big Jerusalem, little old Bethlehem. And see this thing which has come to pass, which the Lord has made known unto us. And they came with what? We're learning here today, guys, the impact of Jesus. And they found Mary and Joseph and the babe lying in a manger. And when they had seen it, they made known abroad the saying which was told them concerning this child. Amen? What was the impact on the shepherds? Now, Mary worshiped. This is not something we can't relate to. Joseph 
found real meaning and purpose in his life. This is something we can all relate to. The shepherds, what they do, they feared. Keep looking. They followed fast. Say that with me. They what? They let everyone know what they were told. This was the impact on the shepherds. They feared, they followed fast, and they let everybody know what was told to them. Amen? These were the lowest class of people during that day. The angels appeared unto them, so so much for status and stuff. So much for you thinking you're so low on the totem pole, God doesn't care about you. That is bull. He loves you to pieces. He shows it right here. The shepherds were impacted by Jesus Christ. And here's how they were impacted. Say it with me. By fearing and following fast. Don't forget that. Come on. Fearing and following fast. They feared and they did exactly what the angels said unto them. They did exactly what they, what they heard. And listen, here's the key to us. When you really meet Jesus, when you really meet Jesus, he will impact you with fear. What does that mean? That's a reverential awe. That's a respect for him. You understand? He's no longer going to be that one you trash talk. Amen. Say. He's going to impact your life like that. You're going to fear him. Reverential awe. And there will be a what? Willingness to follow him and not. I believe that. When Jesus has impacted your life in a real way, it's going to make a difference in your life. Listen, my mama, I keep using mama. Mama had lived a, a life, not a good life, a hard life, an ugly life. Jesus came in her life. She received Jesus, didn't know anything about the Bible, but humbled herself and said, yes, I believe you love me. I believe you died for me. I accept you. Thank you for loving me. She started right there. That afternoon, boom, down the drain. That's pretty fast, I ain't saying. Reverential law. Didn't know much. Now, for me, it was about six months. I did start going to church. I got saved, put my faith in Christ, but I fought it. But even when you fight him, he works with you. Amen? For me, about six months later, I caught myself and I realized I wasn't saying GD and F this and that. My language has changed. And he had started working with me right where I was. Amen? And I started following him and I picked up some speed. Amen. Doesn't mean I don't do this every once in a while. But that's the key here. Did I lose you this morning on this talk? Keep looking. Every one of us has this ability. Every one of us. You don't know what I've gone through. Like out of 7 billion people, you're this one that's only gone through this. Come on. Every one of us has this ability to fear and follow fast. Say, I have this ability to fear and follow fast. You have this ability. Instead of excuse making, I can fear the Lord. I can follow him fast. Well, maybe five years from now, I'll be following Jesus. How about today? Say, come on. It's given by who? It's not given by you anyway. The Holy Spirit, the living God, comes into your life and quickens you that was dead. Now you're alive. Amen? And you have that. You've got to believe that man by faith. He quickens us and empowers us, the shepherds. What else? We're still on time. We ain't too late. I know it feels like it's like Monday already, doesn't it? <laughs> We're like, Monday in here. Simeon. Who's Simeon? Behold, there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. The same was just and devout. He was waiting for the consolation of Israel. He was waiting for Messiah. And the Holy Ghost was upon this man. And it was revealed unto him by the Holy Ghost that, Simeon, you will not see death before you've seen the Lord's Christ, before you've seen the Messiah. And he came by the Spirit into the temple. And when the parents brought the child Jesus into the temple to do after the custom of the law, that Simeon took baby Jesus up in his arms and he blessed God and said, Lord, now let your servant, this old man, Depart in peace according to your word. Say it with me. For my eyes have seen thy salvation. Wow. Pretty big impact, huh? 
which thou hast prepared before the face of all the people, a light to lighten the Gentiles and the glory of thy people, Israel. What was the impact on Simeon? He was impacted when he saw Jesus. He saw salvation. Have you seen Jesus? Well, I mean, he didn't show up last night at the house. That's not what I'm saying. Have you seen his salvation? Have you seen yourself as a sinner? But a sinner that knows in your heart that God loves you. That God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son, Jesus, that if I believe in him, I'm not going to perish. I'm going to have everlasting life. Have you seen that? Say, have you been right there and seen that? Once you see him, you're going to run to him. And you're going to be saved. It's going to happen. Jesus said, if I be lifted up, I'll draw all men unto me. That's what he says over in John 12, 32. If I be lifted from the earth, I'll draw all men unto me. Keep looking. The ruler of the darkness of this world wants Christmas what? Well, there's a reason. There's a reason for these happy holidays. It's not that the government and that people are just trying to be PC and nice and respecting their neighbors. I love my neighbors. There's a bigger something going on. If Jesus is lifted up, people will be saved. If Jesus is not lifted up, people will die and go to a devil's hell. Did you hear me? Yes or no? If Jesus is lifted up, people will be saved. How are they going to be saved with that unless they hear? Yes, sir. Is that what Romans says? It does say that. Romans 10, 17, I think, or 10, 15, somewhere in there. Because when people start to get a glimpse of Jesus, and you know it's the truth, people are more attentive and more open to the gospel around Christmas and what other time of the year? Easter. Is that the truth? Yes or no? It's the truth. Wonder why. Wonder why they're more open during those two times of the year. You know why? Because Jesus is lifted up more those two times of the year than the rest of the year. Does that make sense? Makes sense to me. When people start to get a glimpse of Jesus, eyes are open and they're going to see what? That's why we need to get people here on Christmas Eve. That's why Mitch needs to sing that song. People need to see, that's me. You mean I can be one that says hallelujah again? Yeah. Amen? Come on. Have you seen him? Have you seen salvation? I started getting glimpses of him back in early December 77. Matter of fact, it's 39 years ago today. Three weeks after hearing the preacher, December 18, 1977, 39 years ago today, I was saved. Did Jesus appear to me in a dream? Like, no. He appeared through the word of God, a preacher giving the word. And by faith, I believe the word. That's how it happened. I invited Jesus into my life. Last one, Raj. We're done. Anna. We can't forget Anna. This will be the last one, though. I got more, but we're going to quit on Anna. There was one Anna, old woman, a prophetess. Now, see, a lot of times we know Mary, Joseph, and we know the shepherds, and we know the angels. We don't know Simeon. We didn't know about Anna. Anna was a prophetess. She was the daughter of Phanuel of the tribe of Aser. She was of great age, just as old. If they ever put great age in front of your name, you know you've arrived. Okay? She had lived with a husband. She had lived with a husband seven years from her virginity. That's a long time together. And now she was a widow of about four score and four years, which departed not from the temple, but served God with fastings and prayers night and day. This was a godly woman, a good godly woman, and she was a prophetess. And she coming in that instant gave thanks likewise unto the Lord and spake of him to all that looked for redemption in Jerusalem. Amen. That's that little part about Anna in the Bible. How was she impacted? She was 84 years old. Now, that's really old back then. And a prophetess. Amen. She gave thanks to the Lord. She told all those who were searching about who? That's what she, we saw in those little verses right there. That's what she did. She gave thanks for Jesus. And everybody she saw, <laughs> she's a prophet. She's telling them about Jesus. That's Anna. 
That's Anna. My mama's name was Ann, by the way. I love this. This is beautiful. Keep looking, Raj. Push me. Jesus impacted Anna. Pastor, I'm 84. I'm 90. I'm 78. Whatever. What can I do? How can God impact my life? Put your name in there. Jesus impacted. Put your name in there. And she or he just couldn't stop thanking and praising the Lord. What can I do for Jesus? How about you thank him and praise him? How about that? How about everywhere you go? No better place than Inglewood, Florida. We got a lot of folks that age here. And they need to somebody, see somebody in their 70s and their 80s and even their 90s. If you're 100, go do it. Come on. Praising the Lord. When the world's saying, shut up, you can't say that. You can't say his name. You can't say Christmas. We need to see some Older people that are saying, yes, I can. Yes, I can. Say, yes, I can. Yes, I can. Yes, I can. Come on. Come on. Praise the Lord. Come on. I love this. And here's the thing. Think about it. Who was going to tell an 84-year-old prophetess to shut up? I think that's what you should do. Test it. Now, don't be ugly. Don't be arrogant. Don't be rude. But start thanking the Lord and praising the Lord. Especially if you're elderly up in years. You know what? They just might respect you. They might have been taught back in the day to respect their elders. And as you lift up the name of Jesus, some of them might come to the Lord. If you quit believing the devil's lie that you're supposed to shut up. Amen. This has been hard today, ain't it? Week before Christmas, and I mean it. I ain't mean. Open up your mouth. Open up your mouth. Amen. Say it with me. Say what? Merry One more time. Come on. Merry That's what we need to do. And we got to quit, Rog. We're out of time. Praise the Lord for his word this morning. Amen. We had more, but that's enough. That's enough. Amen. Fellowship meets every Sunday morning on our beautiful 15 and a half acre campus in the Bullseye of Rotunda, West Florida at 140 Rotunda Boulevard West. Early worship begins at 8.30 a.m. with our morning worship service beginning at 10.30 a.m. Between these two services, we offer gourmet coffee, fresh juices, pastries, and lots of fellowship free of charge in our hospitality center. If you are looking for a church in the Inglewood area or would just like to pay us a visit, we would love to fellowship with you. For more information, give us a call at 941-475-7447 or log on to fcinglewood.com. For Pastor Gary Clark and all of us at Fellowship, God bless you.